Cloud on Time app is your pathway to turbocharged mobile application development. Cloud on Time app will bring applications created with Code on Time development tools to your mobile device. Use Code on Time app generator to build forms, reports, and apps. Use your apps offline, online, and on-premises with personal assistant. End users will download Cloud on Time app from the store. Then, they will connect to the application in the cloud and work with their data offline, online, and on-premises. Cloud on Time app downloads files of the application front end to the device. Cloud on Time app detects changes from the server applications and downloads them to the device. Cloud on Time app downloads data for applications with offline sync add-on. Users work in a completely disconnected mode or offline. Synchronization of data with the server is initiated by the end user. Let's begin by creating an application, make a few development iterations, deploy to Microsoft Azure, and finish by exploring how end users interact with Cloud on Time app. Here we have a database that contains a list of products as well as associated suppliers and categories. Let's create an application for our database. Switch to the app generator. To create a new project, first we'll need to specify a name. Go ahead and press create. Press Next so we can connect to our database. Press the three dot button and enter the connection configuration. We would like to add membership to our application. Under the membership section, press Add. This will enable user and role-based security, password recovery, account management, and more. Let's also add a table that will be required to enable the content management system. Press OK to save the connection stream. And press Next. We will need to define a model for each database entity we would like our users to interact with in the application. First, let's start with products. We would like to sort our products by the product name. Let's borrow two fields from the reference supplier. Country and phone. Let's rename supplier company name to just company name. 
rename supplier country to country of origin. Let's also rename units in stock to just in stock. Units on order to on order. Let's also add a calculated field called total stock. This field will be calculated by multiplying unit price by units in stock. Save the calculated field and let's place it right after the company name. Let's double check that our formula is calculated correctly. Click on the data tab Unit price of 10 multiplied by in stock of 13 should get us 130. Go ahead and save the model. We can see that two more database entities are recommended to be created as models. Let's create a model for categories. Let's sort categories by category name. Let's double check the data tab. Everything looks to be in order. Go ahead and save the model. Let's also create a model for suppliers. Let's sort by company name. Let's also remove the home page column from our model. Save the model. And let's proceed. Notice that by default, the web browser will be used as the client for this project. Go ahead and press Generate. First, we will need to log in to our application. Press the Login button on the Instructions control. Let's log in using the standard administrative account. We have gained access to a number of pages in the app. Let's jump to the products page. On this screen, we can view a list of products. Note that our total stock calculated field is present as well. We can sort, filter, and group. straight from the client user interface. Let's modify a product by clicking on the row. We've received word that our warehouse has added 10 more units of veggie spread in our warehouse. Let's add 10 to the value of in stock. Notice that the value of total stock will not change on the form. We will need to add a business rule that will perform the just-in-time calculation. After saving, you can see that total stock has been updated on the grid. Let's take a look at suppliers page. Notice that we have address, city, region, postal code, and country. These values can be geocoded and the map has been automatically enabled. Click on a dropped point to see the relevant supplier. This will reveal the supplier's edit form. 
it would be nice to see a list of associated products with this supplier. Let's add pictures to our user accounts. Navigate to the site content page. Create a new record of type custom. Let's upload a photo. Make sure that the file name contains the username of your user. The path will be equal to sys slash users. Let's go ahead and log in again to see the new photo. You can see our admin photo is now visible in the top right corner. Let's go ahead and make some changes and customizations to this project. Switch back to the app generator, click on the project name, and press design to open the project designer. First, we would like to see related products under Suppliers and Categories forms. Switch to the Controllers tab in the Project Explorer. Right-click on Products and press Copy. Right-click on Suppliers and press Paste. This will create a field of type Data View. We will need to bind this field to each view of the supplier's controller. We would also like to position the product's data view field before the address field. Let's also add this data view field to the categories controller. Make sure to bind it to all three views. Finally, let's ensure that the total price field is calculated just in time. Under Products Controller, double-click the field Unit Price. Make sure to check the box next to Changing the Field Value Causes Calculate command execute. This will raise a special event called Calculate when the value of the field is changed by the user. Make the same change to the In Stock field. Let's add a business rule that will be fired when the calculate command is triggered. Right click on business rules node and press new business rule. We will create a SQL business rule that will be fired when the command name calculate is triggered using the phase execute. We will update the total stock field equal to the unit price multiplied by the in-stock value. This time, let's preview the app using Cloud on Time. We will need to change our default preview client. Press exit. Press Settings, and select Client and Server. Instead of using Web Browser, let's use the option Generic App. I am using Windows 10 here, so Universal Windows Platform has been selected by default. Press Finish. Note that we will need to install Cloud on Time for Windows. Press Install. This will launch the Microsoft Store. Press the Get button to begin installation. Once the installation process is complete, switch back to the App Generator. 
go ahead and press finish. And let's proceed to generate the app. First, we will need to log in. Let's see our changes in action. Open the suppliers page. Let's create a new supplier. Let's insert a couple products at the same time that we'll create our supplier. Press new products. Let's add product one. Let's create a category called category one. Notice that once we've completed the unit price and in stock fields, the total stock has been updated with the correct calculation. Let's create one more product. Notice that the category we have added to our transaction is available as an option here. Upon pressing save, the client will insert one supplier record, two products records, and one category. Finally, let's deploy our application to a production server so our users can access it from their own devices. In the app generator, click on the project name and press publish. Select Azure, press publish to begin the publish procedure. When the deployment process has completed, our users will be able to access the application using their browser. First, let's exit the local instance by using the user menu and pressing exit. Under the three dot menu, press Connect to cloud. Specify the name of your cloud and press save. You can see that our cloud has been discovered and it shows the default icon as well as the name and the selected theme color of the application. Press OK to begin the login process. This particular cloud that we have installed is now communicating to our production server. You can exit this cloud at any time using the exit button located under the user menu.